Good morning, brethren. I want to welcome you to today's family devotional. Uh, my name is Pastor Yemi Omogoyega. With me is my wife, Pastor Mrs. Mary Omogoyega. We are ministering from the Christ Gospel Truth International Ministries located in Ekiti, Ekiti State, Nigeria. Uh, today's message is our message number 94. 94. Thanks for following us all the way. Those of you who have not joined us or you are just joining us, we encourage you to please uh, follow us continuously. You can get them in areas because they are all numbered. And what we are doing here is Bible um, study, less so to speak. And uh, also it's with a lot of sermons, that is messages that the Bible is telling us and we are trying to go through the entire Bible. Today, we are in the, the book of uh, number one. Number 94. Uh, yeah, the Bible passage. Okay. The Psalm first passage 41. is the, it's taken from the book of Psalm 41. 1 to 6. 1 to 6. Luke 9. In the New Testament, we are taking Luke 9. Chapter 9. 57 to 10. 24. From the chapter 10 from chapter 9 57 to chapter 10 verse 24, 24. then one. we are taking the book of the Deuteronomy from the old testament chapter 1 verse 1 to 2 23 from verse 1 to chapter 2 verse 23 like i said we are going through the bible chapter by chapter book by book, page by page, sentence by sentence, verse by verse, and I'm picking the several messages that God is sending to us through them. Indeed, this is the best way to profit from the Bible. Uh, there's no way you will not be addressed. There's no way your needs will not be addressed as we go on. I assure you, please be attentive. Now, kindly remember to share the messages. Number one, do not forget to share them. Pass your comments as you deem fit. Number three, like our videos. And more importantly, again, subscribe to our channel. God bless you. In these our ministrations, we use the name Yehoshua or Yeshua or Yesu. That is the real original name of Christ. Um, English translated it Jesus, but we stick to that which is original. Like I always say, Yemi is Yemi in any language. Amen. God bless you. Now, we are going to... Just one moment, please. Now, the topic we are treating this morning is titled Desire the Greater Blessing. Desire the Greater Blessing. Um, we are going to read the book of Psalm chapter Psalm chapter huh? 41. God bless you. Kindly be attentive. As we read, blessed are those who have regard for the weak. Okay. The Lord delivers them in times of trouble. Mm. The Lord protects and preserves them. They okay. are counted among the blessed in the land. He does not give them over to the desire of their foes. The Lord sustains them on their sickness and restores them from their bed of illness. I say, have mercy on me, Lord. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? When one of them comes to see me, he speaks falsely, while his head gathers slander. Then he goes out and spreads it around. 
God bless you, man. Um, like I said, the title is "You Should Desire the Greater Blessings." There are two blessings. There are sub blessings. Okay, there are two major blessings that a man should desire. When I say a man, that means woman inclusive or any person should desire. The first one is Matthew 6.33 Seek first the kingdom of God. That's and its righteousness and every other thing shall be added to every other desire you may desire other things and the other thing that is also important is for us to live a life a fulfilled life a very successful life in the good sense of it amen now I've always said it, and I take my root or my basis or my precedence from what Christ said in the book of John, okay, chapter 10, verse, uh, chapter 10, chapter 10, verse 10, A and B. The thief has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the Son of Man has come to give life, to give life more abundantly. And I did say that, you know, in, in, in that perspective, I'm always saying that in this world, the two things I desire is to gain this world and reign with Christ at the end of the journey of my race in this world. When I exit this world, I want to reign with Christ. As the Lord God Almighty lives, may you and I fulfill our destinies in this world and reign with Christ at the end of the day in Yahushua's name. Now, I've always said also, the two sides of the desires have to be fulfilled. It is there you can say you have a successful life in the true sense of, you know, the Bible does not just say successful. The book of Joshua 1, 8 to 10 says, This book of the Lord shall not depart from thy mouth. Thou shalt meditate upon it day and night, and thou shalt endeavor to do all that is contained therein. And then, as you are endeavoring to do it, your ways shall prosper and you shall have good success. Amen. Good success to me means succeeding in this world that is, you know, living a fulfilled life, positively fulfilled life, that is by affecting the lives of others, you know, or positively. By, by impacting our own lives positively and then impacting the lives of others positively. That is Matthew, sorry, uh, James 1, verse 27. Even when you say you are a Christian, you may not live a successful life until you have followed what the Word of God says that a person that comes in, calls himself a Christian, that the Christianity that Christ accepts, the pure religion, pure. There is religion, which is what everybody practices about. I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm this, I'm a Buddhist, I'm a Judaist, and so on and so forth. But there is um, a pure religion. Pure religion, the Bible says, the one that is undefiled in the eyes of God is the one that looks after the poor, 
the orphan, the widows, the less privileged, the one by extension that honors God with their substance by taking good care of fellow men. And to buttress this, Christ himself said in the book of Matthew chapter 22 from verse 37 to 39 that we should love God with the whole of our might, with the whole of our being and everything we have. And then that the second one, that this is the greatest love, the greatest desire. And then we should then love our neighbors as ourselves. So love towards God and love towards man is the RD. What will take us to heaven at the end of the day. Failure to do this, we are just practicing religion, just like the Sadducees and Pharisees did in the olden days, and just as we are doing even today in our churches all over the world. Only few churches are actually into pure religion that is acceptable unto God. But what we are practicing is ordinary religion. Uh, we have to make a distinction. What is the distinction? Ordinary re religion are those who, if you go to church, you must go to church every day, you must fast, you must pray, you observe all the various signs, you observe all the tithe, you give your offerings, you are, everybody sees you. In fact, you attend all programs and all that but you lack the practicality of it, which is love towards God and love towards fellow men. And you see, you're going to all those programs. We portray, we portray you as if you know God. But in the real sense of God, those who knew God or who know God are the people that do what God says. says in Matthew chapter 6 or so, he said, um, they call me Lord, Lord, but they do not do what I ask them to do. And it is those who do what Christ asks them to do that will make heaven. And then even in this world, like I always say, I've told you I'm not a prophet of, um, I'm not a pro-poverty uh, pastor. No, because my God Christ himself told me, I have come to give life, to give life more abundantly in this world and to enjoy blissfulness, prosperity, health, financial, material, intellectual, mental, anything you can think of, life of that is full of enjoyment, peace, and joy. That's what I desire. That's why I said desire the greater thing and the greater thing and now that is a great desire okay the, all those ones i have listed they are great desires but the greater desire for me is to make heaven how about you this is the summary of the whole essence of christianity to succeed very well in this world and to reign with christ at the end of our journey may you benefit from this uh, portion. May I benefit from these portions in Yehoshua's name. Amen. Now let's take some points. Those who have regard for the weak are uh -huh. protected. Uh -huh. Always ask for forgiveness of sin. Okay, that's all right. About to be blessed. Okay, you see, I did say that it is those who do what Christ says we should do. Love God with the whole of your heart by making the Bible your companion. Studying it day and night. Joshua 1, 8 to 10. And then endeavoring. You may not be able to do all, but endeavoring. Eagerness, willingness, zealousness towards doing what God has asked us to do. And one of the commandments is what Christ told us in Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Love your God with the whole of your heart. So, in the time matter of loving God, you also 
partake very well in evangelism. Matthew 28 from chapter 16 to the end. All powers on earth has been given in heaven and earth has been given to me and I, I sent you now to go all out, preach, teach and baptize the people. Amen. So that they can make heaven. So this assignment is so important in our lives. These are evidences that you love God. Then number two, do what God asks you to do. Christ says, love your neighbor as yourself. You see, there is the spiritual aspect that is, you know the Bible, you know the will of God, and God is relating with you, and you are relating with God one-on-one, and then... Um, you are always eager when it gets to things of God and then you contribute to the development of your church, you take good care of your ministers. Now the second aspect of it is now, let's come to the human aspect of it. Anything that is spiritual that has no practical equivalent or practical manifestation of what we preach and teach, which we are baptizing the people into that does not have manifestation of love towards our neighbor. It's just mere ordinary religion. But the pure religion says love, care for the widow, care for the needy, care for, do justice, Matthew 23, 23, Luke 11, 40 to 42, in between you get what I mean. Even to churches, it told them that the purpose of the church is to gather material wealth for the betterment of the congregants, that is, meeting them at the point of their needs. You don't pray for them, say God bless you when they are hungry. All you need is do all you can with the money that is in your hands in the church as a church, meet the needs, gather them together. And then spread that money amongst them. Nobody says you can't take part of it to build edifices, edifices. But what you spend on the people's, meeting the people's needs. Food, shelter, education, um, health, and you know, love, every other clothing, hospitality and all that. Should be far greater than what you spend on building edifices. So churches build edifices that will sit 50,000 people at a go, but the not even 2% of the population can benefit from the monies gathered from the, by the church. So, you see, if you don't manifest those ones, now, the Bible we just read says, those who care for the weak, who are the weak? The poor, the orphans, the widows, even our parents, our siblings who are still looking up to us for support, our neighbors, you know, we may not be biologically related, but those who are in our neighborhood that we can reach out to, we are supposed to reach out to them by inviting them to Christ and then by meeting them at the immediate point of their needs, like feeding, whatever that, you know, as much as we can. Helping children who are dropouts in the school by giving them empowerment or by sending them to school scholarship and everything. You see, Bible says here in this book of Psalms, that if you are the type that belongs to this one, God will always be on your side. Enemies cannot overcome you Yes, they will come up, they will gather, they will slander you, they will do everything that they can do to bring you down. But Bible says, even in the book of Psalms, which is the Old Testament, that if you are the type that love your neighbor, that is the weak, the poor, the orphan, the less privileged, if you are the type, the widows, if you are the type that is taking good care of them, God will never allow you to suffer any setback they will try because even as you're advancing in life your promotion your 
breakthroughs will not go uncontested because there will be obstacles or standards that are raised against you. But God's standards will always higher standards will be raised against them seven times fold. Amen. So if I were you, if I have not been kind to people generally today, for me to be able to be protected, to get the best assurance, the best security, because the best safety, the best supplies, I know that it is in investing my time, my money, my energy, my talent, my everything that I have is by investing it in others, particularly the less privileged, those who are really and truly in need. So, when you are doing that, fear not any enemy. They will start, they will come before you one time. God will come against them seven times. Amen. Let's go ahead now. Always ask for forgiveness of sin. Okay. When you are about to be blessed, you will be slander. Uh-huh. You will have many troubles. Mm-hmm. Slander and sickness. Uh-huh. But God will always protect you. Mm-hmm. Look now. I remember that guy saw me said, if they, if they come to you with stealing, say no, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Be watchful. Don't be tempted to leave Yeshua. For devil is around. Be watchful. Don't be tempted to leave Yeshua. For that devil is around. He will come to you with sickness. He will come to you with, with anger. He will come to you with temptations. He will come to you with lying. He will come to you, you know, he went to report Job to God. I remember. So it will be reported to God even by the devil himself. But you will triumph over them all. If only you fear this God, you know him, and then uh, you do his will by doing helping the sick, the meek, the weak, the weak amongst us, the poor, the shadows, the widows. And so on and so forth. So no matter what it is, God will always answer your prayers. And then you will also be humble to know that no matter how holy you holiness you want to the level of holiness you want to claim, your holiness, your righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. That is why the prayer of humility, in humility, that God should forgive you your sins always. That God should forgive me my sins always. They are inevitable prayers. That is why even Christ taught us to forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Forgiveness is also part of it. So we need to be part and parcel of those who pray in humility. Forgive us our sins. Then we too should forgive others. If you are living in unforgiveness, I, I bet you, not by way of judgment, you don't qualify to be called a Christian because that is why you are paying your tithes, you are paying your offerings, you are doing everything, but you begrudge people in your heart. You bottle them in and yet you say you are professing the name of Christ. You are not a Christian. So now let's go. The greater thing that we need to desire you get to know them as we go on. Yes, ma'am. If you want to serve God, give no excuses. Mm-hmm. Christ appointed 72 disciples to go around and preach. Okay, if you want to serve God, like we said, which is for a wise person, because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, that fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. This fear, you are not fearing God or afraid of God because he will kill you. No. Reverence your creator. Honor him. Obey him. Be on his side. Acknowledge him to be your power, your source of every good thing in this world. 
and acknowledge him to be the only one that can really protect you and guide you in your ways through this world. So once you know this, if once the fear of the Lord is in you, <coughs> excuse me, of course, you are he too will be on your side and you are therefore protected. Amen. What is go ahead from where you if you want to serve God, please give no excuses. It's so common in our lives. <clears throat> Someone has offended me. And yet, I am supposed to help him. Then I give the excuse that I would have done this for him, but because she has offended me, he has offended me, he has done this, he has done that. Ha, ha, ba. Give no excuses. Then you want to serve God. God says, take care of the poor. You look at a child that you have capability of supporting, maybe educationally or academically. You are in a position to, please note that God does not say you should go and do what you don't have capacity to do. No. But at any point in time in your life, you have capacity to do something. Because the way we are looking at it is we are looking at it from money Money, money. No, sometimes it is your used clothes that God can use to bless others. Sometimes it is your the word of good counsel. Sometimes it is visitation. Sometimes it is simple like 200, 100 naira, 500 naira airtime or 1,000 airtime or whatever. That Or even in these days of data, it could be data that you can use to support somebody. It could be that um, giving phone calls or just asking after somebody, then if God has prospered you to a level and you have some money, uh -uh, why not? Instead of giving the 10% that you are giving to church illegally, which is ungodly, which God has erased according to seven Hebrews 7, verse 5, in fact, verse 1 to 22, 22 says a new Christ has shorted a new covenant that does not require your tithes. And when you were paying your tithes, according to verse 5 of that chapter 7, Hebrews says, when you were paying, you are paying it according to the law, and the law has been erased. So why are you paying tithes? If not for that, our Jews are deceptive and they just want money at all costs. And this money they are not applying even to for the benefit of the people according to 2 Corinthians chapter 8 from verse 1 to the end and then what the hammer is give give generously according to chapter 9 from verse 1 to 5 that you should give but not they themselves not appropriating the gifts according to the will of God that it should be used to benefit members so that those who are poor will not be poor and those who are rich will not be richer while others are in penury. Amen. So give and let your life reflect what God says we should do. Yes. You want to serve God. Give no reason. Uh -huh. Christ appointed 72 disciples to go out. Amen. Busy as Christ was in the ministry, he still fed the people when they were hungry. And Christ says, we should forgive our enemies. We say, we give excuse that, you know, there's no need for giving them. Because when we forgive them, they will trouble us the more. For Christ says, forgive them. But the law in the Old Testament says, stone them to the teeth for that. But Christ brought freedom. Freedom from bondage. Freedom from unforgiveness. Freedom from all forms of sins. Freedom from bitterness. Freedom from hatredness. Freedom from um, envy. Freedom from all sorts of bondages that surround men but we give excuses we just want to find one reason or the other where where we must punish our wives where we must punish our children where we must punish our neighbors where we must punish our parents because they didn't care for us according to our own calculations when we were young so they deserve to be punished oh <laughs> This is, you see, Christianity is contrary to religion. Religiosity observes laws. Christianity observes love. Irrespective of whosoever it is, you are supposed to show kindness. 
They are supposed to show love towards them. So that's the difference. That's why Christ was preaching a different set of doctrines. When, contrary to what even he learned from the rabbis. He mentored him, but he knew better than them all. And he started mentoring them. Amen. So you need to evangelize. You need to also be doing good to people. This is your way to good source. This is what you should desire. Please go ahead. Now Christ appointed 72 people to go and minister to people. Just as he has appointed you and I, Matthew 28, 16 forward, that we should go all out and teach, preach, and baptize the people. And when we are going to baptize, it's not for the purpose of material gift. You know why some of our churches miss it? They put money as focus. You see, they see church where you are able to gather people together and there are many. You begin to dole out a lot of um, trickish um, money collecting, money spinning things to them. Today harvesting, today tithing, tomorrow seed, give to feed, seed of faith. Tomorrow, those who are looking for the fruit of the womb, that, and then there is even one funny one. They call it uh, Able Connect. That is, you are connecting to the anointing of your pastor, stupid man or woman who does not read the Bible. Your Bible, your Bible read, uh, your, your pastor studied the Bible before he even started. It's unfortunate that he led you into believing that tapping into the anointing is, is another special heading that should bring money to them in the church. And, you know, all those things. But yet, he studied the Bible. He only chose to make money out of the Bible. The, the purpose of evangelism should be to win souls for Christ and lead them aright. Not that you are using to exploit them. It's unfortunate that it is happening. But you and I, Christ, God says we should go and minister, preach, teach, baptize them. You should not explain. That's why even that when they were going, they should not go with anything. Whatever they are offered where they are going, it's a sacrificial thing. You do things not because you are certain that certain results, expected results will come. You, you, you preach and teach not to gather the people together to be raising funds through them, but to lead them to Christ and nurture them in Christ so that they continue to grow. Amen. Failure to do that, you see that you missed it. Many, you see, many churches narrowly missed it because that quest for money, they cannot resist it. They can't. So they keep getting the money in and not even using it for the purpose that God wanted it to be used. So don't be amongst them. Then evangelism, like I said, they went out, they preached and taught, and by the time they came back, they came back with good reports. I'm still challenged myself today. How many souls have I won for Christ? If Christ were to come now and said, okay, what's my harvest for last month? How many souls? Well, may God help our infirmities in Yahushua's name. I will continue to minister the way I'm. That's why you could be part of this end-time ministry by sharing this message. You cannot... You are shy to talk, you are publicity shy, you are everything, but this is the message. Just share it to your friends and enemies alike. Even demonstrate your love for your enemies. Share them, those that you think are even your enemies. We may not be, maybe you are, they are your own in, has invention, but that notwithstanding. When you are sharing the message, you are sharing love. Amen. So they came by, reported good report, and they were even saying that the sick were healed. And the lame walked, the blind saw. Christ told them, Yes, thank God, well done, good harvest. But the greater thing, which I say you should desire, which I desire, you see, desire the greater thing. The greater thing or greatest thing is to make heaven, that your names are written in the book of life. Amen. You see, that you go out and evangelize and people give their life to Christ. God is using that to count you worthy to make heaven. 
But don't gather them and start exploiting them. You're already getting your reward here. If you want money, you want everything, do part-time job to make money in addition to your ministry. Ministry is full-time for everybody. I've always said it. Ministry is 24-hour service. Anywhere you go, your condo, your look, your appearance, your talent, your work, everything should minister the gospel. That is, you do everything with the whole of your heart as you are doing it unto God, including serving others. That is ministry, not just um, sermonizing alone. No, 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 no. Doing what you are saying is the ministry. And the greater thing is what you should desire. Do love your God with the whole of your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then you are already on your way to reigning with Christ in the end. So brethren, the bottom line is this. No matter the situation you are, talk to somebody today. Preach this gospel today. Then follow those whom you have. God has used to win. Follow them up. Then remember to start with your family. How many of them are saved? How many of them are unsaved? Only God knows. But as many as you can identify, give the word of God to them. Two, go all out. Help all those who needed to be helped in your family. Your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, your brothers, even those you perceived as your enemies, your stepfather, your stepmother, your biological, your non-biological, your friends. Go all out now and begin to Remember somebody today and do something good to somebody in alignment with this. This is the greater things. You see, they went out to minister and people gave their life to Christ. And Christ says, they were giving a report back to Christ that we have succeeded. And he said, yes, you have really succeeded. But the greater success you had is that your names are written in the book of life. May we all qualify by His grace to make it to that. May we have such good reports, good remarks from Christ at the end of our journey in this world, in your wish for us, name. Yes, ma'am. If they welcome you, stay. If not, go. Christ, the book, Chorazin, okay. Bethsaida, and Copano. You see, when you go to a place and you are preaching to me, I'm not, we are not saying that everybody you talk to, we, are, we yield. No. Majority may not even yield. Leave that to God. But talk anyway. Talk to them anyway. Do good to them anyway. Love them anyway. <coughs> so share what you have with them anyway. Amen. Even some people, you will help them. They will reciprocate with evil. Don't bother. Go ahead and do it. Now, you see, Corazon... Uh, what was the name of the Capernaum and uh, Bethsaida? Mm. All of them, they were cities where Christ is closely associated with, but they rejected Christ. Amen. Your parents, your brothers, your sisters, they may reject you because of Christ. Never mind. Stick to your gun. It takes, you see, there is positive and negative stubbornness. All right? Positive stubbornness is when you say, I resolve to serve Christ. I resolve to serve only the true God. I resolve, I resolve to put bitterness aside in my particular, particularly polygamous home where what is lacking there is love, where every mother will recruit their children as their soldiers to be fighting on their behalf, fighting one another. You see, stretch a hand of fellowship to that your, what you call half brother, half sister, half, uh, and to your niece, to your mother's uh, siblings, to your father's siblings, to as much as you can afford, remember. You see, all you need to do, pray to God, please help me to have so I can give. And from the little you have now, give out to somebody. Amen. Give that love. Then God will begin to multiply what you give out. Amen. So, do not be among those who will reject Christ, like Corazin, like Bethsaida, like uh, uh, Capano. Amen. Please go ahead. The 72 
succeeded. Mm -hmm. Then Christ gave us authority to trample a post of Christ. Mm -hmm. All power belongs to Christ. Mm -hmm. Let's say that this generation, mm -hmm. it is a great blessing. Hey, man, it's a great blessing that will come during this generation. The Bible is now free online. It's even free. Some churches are still giving out free. And you have all the Googles of this world to look for anything to study. This We are, we are the most blessed generation. So we have no excuse now that we don't have the Bible. We have money to buy data to watch um, uh, BB Niger and to watch immoralities and all that. Why don't we use the same data to buy, to download the Bible and study it and know the truth and for the truth to set us free? Amen. That is what will give you the greater benefit. Nobody does it that fails. You will not fail. I shall not fail in your insurance name. Yes, next. It's a great blessing to be asked to preach, teach, and bless people. Yes. The greatest desire is our name to be written. The in greatest heaven. desire that you should have. Like I said, I have two desires. The great desire is for me to be fulfilled in this world, live a life of abundance, enjoy my peace, break through, make everything good. But the greater or greatest desire for me is to reign with Christ after this world. So desire that. Let's go to Old Testament. Deuteronomy. Moses was to all Israelites. He reminded them of the law, uh -huh. delegation. Uh -huh. Judges should not show passion. Okay. You see, during the Old Testament, it was the laws that... In fact, that's why the book of Joshua 1, 8 to 10 says, This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth. You shall study it day and night. You meditate upon, think about, ruminate on it day and night, and endeavor to do what is inside. And then thereafter, that everything you lay your hands shall prosper, you shall have good success, which means, even in the Old Testament, you want to have good success. You want to enjoy this world. You want to have the hope of making heaven. You must be familiar with the manual of life, the word of God. Then, you see, this is when the New Testament dispensation comes, the Old Testament having been jettisoned, erased, uh, because of its imperfectness. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now the New Testament now came, Christ says, Love your neighbor, love your God with the whole of your heart, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the new law, the new, we won't call it law, the grace. This time around, no rituals. This time around, no sacrifices. This time around, no ablutions, no, all this temple thing. Even Bibles, I mean, as the Bible not made it clear in the New Testament that it, you yourself now at the temple, no longer the uh, Shiloh, the conventions that have been destroyed several times. Christ lives now in us, not in the temples. Yeah, we only gather there. We call that one the assembly of the saints for us to gather together. Bible encourages us not to forsake the assembly of the others. Of others. Then why do we have building churches? Well, it's just to protect us from sunshine and rainfall and harsh weather so that we can concentrate to study the word of god then okay between that and the word which one is more important knowing the word is more important because that is why if you i was um i read a report or i had a report that where the uh, robbers went to about well, three churches the redeemed the the cnc and which other church i think they are Three, about three of them in Ikorodu recently, I think this week, they went to rob all those churches and they cut it away with a lot of instruments worth millions of naira. Then you now wonder, why is it that God did not come down and destroy them? Why did the fire not come upon them? In that temple, that holy place, that holy place, supposedly holy place, you see, these things are happening. 
Not because God is asleep, not because God is uh, does not see them, but God does not dwell in those buildings. Amen. If it pleases God, can make them to be caught and dealt with by according to law, because they are children of the law. The only thing they understand is law, not love. But God Himself dwells inside of you, not that temple. If it was in the Old Testament period, the Old Testament period, you only remember when they brought Dagon, when they brought the Ark of God before Dagon, and the Dagon fell face down until it broke and to pieces. That kind of thing would have been happening. But that time, the presence of the Lord was in the temple, the physical temple. But today, the presence of the Lord is in your hearts. In you as a person, not as in the building. See, anybody can break into what we call temple today and then cut away with many things. They can do it as if they have succeeded, but which is not good anyway. But they will do it. But the fact that you don't see fire coming down upon them is to tell you that that's just a mere structure. The holiness we are talking about is in you. Be thou holy, as thy Father in heaven is holy. The presence of the Lord is in our hearts now, not in the structure. When we gather together to praise, it's a gathering of temples. The Spirit of the Lord will come down when we gather together. There's nothing wrong, as I said, in gathering together, but we should not uh, deify de the building called church. Amen. So, the Lord will help us in the Holy Spirit's name. Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Judges should not show partiality. Okay. Our cases will come to Moses. Okay, when in the process, you see, it was God that was guiding everybody. God will talk to Moses. Moses will pass instructions down. We are going to a point that, you remember Jethro that came to tell Moses that, look, your whole body is too much. judging this people from a day and night. Your life will be cut short. Huh? Why not delegate? He started delegating. Now he warned the people that he delegated power to the judges never to be partial, to fear God, do it according to the will of God. He also acknowledged that there will still be some cases that will have to do with um, the final authority that they will not be able to handle successfully. So I refer such matters to me. In this case, the matters that will come to him were fewer than it they were before. So you will have time to breathe, and those people will do justice. That's why you have appeal court now. Amen. So coming to Moses, the final, whatever final Moses said, I'm, Moses will not say anything unless he had the leading of God. So you can now see, if God is leading you, it is better. But then our judges, that's why today we are crying, our judges are partial, they are this and that. Well, it is left for them. Judges are free to choose whoever they want to be. But Moses told them, just as Christ is telling us today, is, the, is, is Christ in support of going to court? No. He said, don't go to court. So because it's, it's, it's a corrupt place. And even difficult matters should be brought from the church to from the court to church. So that God will have a financing instead of um, the churches and the courts. But even though the Bible teaches that those who will go will still go because there are some children of perdition. So don't be surprised sometimes when pastors are um, they, they are tired. They don't know what to do again. They don't go to court over certain matters. Don't judge them. Well, children of perdition will make sure that they provoke them to the point that they act and they want to actually damage the minister's uh, ministry by saying, look at the pastor that's called himself and is going to church, is going to court. You see, but there are some situations now that, you know, if you don't take care, you will discover that <laughs> your faith will be tested. So the wisest thing is not to go to court. But when you are provoked and the person you are talking to is unyielding, what do you do? Amen. That's food for thought. So, in other words, let us uh, demonstrate love. Yes? When God wishes us well, mm. we think he hates us. Mm. Follow the law. 
Amen. You see, during the period of the Lord, we are expected to follow the law according to Jesus on it. Endeavor to do all that. Know the laws. Endeavor to do what the laws tell you to do. Then you shall have good success. You see? But in the New Testament, what is the new law? Love God with the whole of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. So follow what Christ now tells us to do. Love God with the whole of your heart. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Very vital. You need to know all these things. And I need to know them. Once we know them, let us practice them. Yeah, we do not lack sermons in the church, but we lack the willingness to put into practice what Christ, who is the author and finisher of our faith, had taught us. That is why we are in the dilemma that we are. Greed will never leave a man unless Christ is in him. Stealing, fornication, adultery, alcoholism, all forms of vices, envy, jealousy, jealousy, no, no, they, all these things will not leave us unless Christ is in us. So let us, and if we are, if Christ is in us and we are in Christ, then we sh- it should be seen from our practical lives that we are doing his will. And this way, the world will be getting better and better. May God help us in your Yes, ma'am. Follow the Lord like Caleb and Joshua. Mm-hmm. When you work against God's counsel, mm-hmm. it will backfire. You see, it's man, many a time, let me take Japa, Japa, Japa as an example. A lot of people want to Japa. God may propose it that they will Japa, but maybe that God's time has not come. Then anytime they now try and they fail, they think that the world has ended. You think that God is unkind. Many a time, until God's time is ripe, anything you are doing will be in vain. That is why the Bible says that the person that is taking securing the house, unless God secures the house, no man. The security man will sleep off while the robbers rob. They can even tie him down in his koro eyes. But when God is on your side, Miracles will happen such that you can never be overpowered. It is very vital that we follow what God asks us to do. Moses followed. Caleb and Joshua followed. Caleb and Joshua went with ten others. One tribe, one from each tribe to go and spy. Only Caleb and Joshua brought in good reports. They are the ones that made the promised land. All those at the, at, the, at the 38 years, like I said, they have all those who started the journey after it's their children and children's children that got there. So we need to know that when we are pursuing something and it's not, it seems not to be working, all we need to do is wait upon the Lord. Keep trying, wait upon the Lord. When is your time? It will come to be. I just used to jump as an example. You want to marry, it's so difficult to find the right one. Keep searching, praying, and believing God that one day your wife will come. You are being tortured in your place of work. Pray to God. Maybe that place is not good. Every pressure you have is a stepping stone to higher, to the next level. So why not trust in God to take you there? You are afraid of your tomorrow. Why afraid? When God is on your side. Do the will of God. And God will fulfill his promises for your life. So brethren, the greatest thing you see, desire two things. Desire to make good success out of this life. And then desire to make heaven. In whatever your desire you want to make in this world, everything is limited to this world. The one that goes beyond this world is the kingdom of God. Identify with the kingdom of God. So that you win here and you win there. Amen. May you not lose on either side. May we all have a win-win report at the end of our journeys in this world in Yehoshua's name. If you love others, please share these messages to them. Also, may you also be counted worthy to reign with Christ 
at the end of our journey in Yahushua's name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for this great opportunity to hear from you this morning. Accept our thanksgiving in Yahushua's name. Daddy, it is clear to us now. You don't want us to live in penury. You don't want us to live in poverty. You don't want us to live a wretched life. Therefore, that which you say you have come to give to us in John 10, 10, but we, please, that is a life of abundance. Let it be our portion. But the greater thing above all is, Lord, even when we have succeeded in this world, let us reign with you till eternity in Yehoshua's name. Thank you, Father. Blessed be to your name. In Yehoshua's mighty name, we pray. Talk to somebody today through either your mouth or through your actions, through doing good to others. Minister to somebody. God bless you. Have a very wonderful day.